lunch tonight, are we? Yeah, we're going to be the first to talk about it. One, one more reach. Is this the last one? Well, it's not a public hearing. It's a board discussion. It's part of the... Yeah, we can discuss. I got the board, so like every... I want I want you guys to visually see what we're talking about. You know, cause it's, we, we've been talking about talking about it, but I want to... What is that? For the rich. We'll go up there. We, we might sit out there. I don't know. We'll see. What about the... Uh, did you ever get the MOA for the nope. idiot? You want nope. to go to his house? I know. Welcome, everybody. Danielle, you ready? Thank you. Uh, tonight's uh, workshop meeting and tonight's workshop meeting is uh, the board's going to have a discussion, open discussion about the Ridge Line, and this is for March 25th, 2024. And I want everyone to please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for all the men and women who sacrificed their lives for us to serve our country and serve our town. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen. Share is out today, so it's just us. So I need a motion to approve the agenda. I make the motion. I need a second. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Motion to approve the minutes from the March 11th, 2024 town board meeting. I'll make that motion also. I need second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Authorize the payment of the bills of $517,000.45.40. I need a motion to pay the bills. Make the motion to authorize payment of the bills. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye, so moved. Uh, supervisor updates for this meeting. Just go over a few of the meetings I've had in the last month or so here. <clears throat> um, I went to our a meeting with the Supervisors Association. Um, where we discuss uh, many things that uh, trying to do shared services and uh, we talk about the um, uh, recycling centers, we talk about the CAP program that's coming down for the court system, uh, but a lot of good things we talk about. I met with the GPI engineers again at Old Indian Trail and the highway department. I also met there with Central Hudson on Old Indian Trail um, just the other day. I uh, met multiple times with Nikki Diggs, John Beham, Milton Landing, uh, our team, our uh, highway department to go over all the work that's going on down at the Milton Landing. I don't know if everybody's aware, but uh, as we awarded the bid uh, about four months ago, the, they started work down at the Milton Landing, and uh, that work is in progress. So as of right now, the park uh, landing is closed except for the east side. Uh, there is a way to get across to the east side by the pier, um, but we uh, would recommend that you don't go down there right now because it is a construction zone. Uh, met multiple times with Bell Engineer at the community center, which is wrapping up. Uh, Dave Corrigan, I had a conversation with, an email conversation with, with DOT. We talked about the fatalities by the Falcon, um, and they're coming down to review. Um, I'm requesting at the minimum lighting uh, another crosswalk. Um, we're also talking about turning lanes at the community center. So uh, I anticipate having that meeting shortly. Uh, I have also have a meeting on Wednesday with Senator Kristen Gillibrand's office um, to go over uh, re the um, regional uh, funding that they possibly might have for the town. Um, so I'm going to be uh, meeting with them on Wednesday. Uh, we started the preparation for the summer camp, so thank you to Tina and all the ladies, Melanie, Gail, Dawn, and Nicole. Uh, they're all coming back this year, 
um, and uh, we also have a meeting on Wednesday to start uh, moving forward. Um, I want to thank Dave. Uh, Dave started um, the summer cleanup at the parks. Uh, he replaced the mulch in the playground at the Cluett Chance. He replaced the uh, at the dog park, right, Dave? You want to follow up on any of that? Um, yeah, so we did have that incident with the young kid that sadly died with that accident on a playground down, where was it, Jersey? or I think it was Jersey. But anyway, that, so, it, so it raised concern with a lot of the people that bring their kids to the town park. And the state, they, they want 12 inches of this special mulch, it's called cushion mix, to go underneath the playground area. And we usually do it maybe every other year, but we went up and looked at it and there was maybe six inches, which is, still isn't bad, but we thought maybe we should replenish it now before we have any problems. So we put, actually put 200 yards, which is two large trailers of playground cushion mix on all the playgrounds. And then also we had some concern about the dog park. A lot of the people down there, and I, I frequent that quite often, they uh, were complaining about some of the low-lying areas where there was mud and the dogs were getting into trying to dig under the fence. So we also put, not, not a, a certified playground mix, but a, like, a, like a wood chip base uh, for the dogs also. So, and that's only phase one. We're going back to the dog park. We've got to do some landscaping along the front. We've got to fix some of the plow damage. And then, uh, so that's what we've been doing the last, basically all, all last week. Well, thank you. It looks great. Um, and, uh, you know, this is what happens in the spring. We start doing these uh, outside projects. Um, and uh, the park's starting to shape up. And uh, I know we're also looking at possibly putting, uh, with the help of the bocce league, they're going to help uh, build a, uh, a third bocce court. We're starting that next week. Yeah, and I know Dave's yeah, going to help, out. help dig that out for them, but they're going to build the whole thing themselves after that. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that's a great thing. So uh, that means the, the, you know, the league is, uh, I think they got 25 teams or so. They got 20 teams and yeah. we're trying to expand yeah. to, there's like five or six teams on the waiting list. Yeah, so they want another court and I, you know, if we could find a spot and we did, mm -hmm. so that's great. Um, also the highway department, if you didn't notice, they were actually cleaning up all the drainage around some of the parks down at the, Young, the Young's Field. Uh, opened up them. The community center is, uh, they started work down there, the highway department, and they marked out all the paving. Uh, they got the parking lot uh, situated where it's ready for paving. I did uh, receive the uh, donation from Tilcon of 300 tons of stone. So they're going to be uh, delivering that for the parking lots. That's at their end on Young's. And uh, they're also starting to uh, form up the blocking that's going to go around as a barrier by the community center with a planter bed and uh, another sidewalk in the back and the stairs. So there's a lot of exterior work going on. You also notice, if I don't know if you, they were putting in the flagpole cement the last two days. The new flagpole is going to be going up shortly. And then I know Dave and his team are going to landscape the whole front of the building. Um, so we're still pushing for no later than June 1st, the first week of June, uh, if we can. Um, but it all is going to depend on how much uh, our guys and everybody could get done in that time span. So um, that looks good. So uh, that's what I got so far for this month. Any, anybody else want to speak? You could speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> no? Okay, so we don't have any other presentations tonight. Anybody have any comments on the specific on the agenda? Anybody have any comments on the agenda? All right, reports of committees. I think we only have the one from the CAC. I know Mickey is very good at getting this in, so. Good evening.
Where do you want to put? You want to put this in the lobby here? If that's, I, that's my first <coughs> thought, but it could go someplace else. Thoughts on that? <coughs> it's just a regular <coughs> water. No, underneath is the garbage can. This is the board of the test. And this I chose uh, a rectangular one, so we'll put the snuggle sign against the wall and we'll put a car sign on it. I think as long as the school's okay with it, I don't have an issue with it. The only thing is downstairs is buzz in only, right? Uh, how is it? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> Yeah, but I think if you had an open area, you'd probably yeah, get to do better. Than the there, then we'd no than we do but I think you'd collect more if it was a place they could just walk in and you know how people are. So I don't think the can would go anywhere that jug might go. Is there a way we could put a weight on the bottom of it? Because then it could be just outside on the overhead. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Fully accessible to the public at any point. Actually, you probably could chain it with the handle. Better off outside, though, I think. <laughs> well, uh, before you go on, I mean, does the board have any objections to this being placed there? No. It's his lot. If he's good with it, I'm good with it. <clears throat> yep. So I need a motion for the CAC to place the uh, bottle cap donation uh, cans outside by the police is, department. My, my concern is, is it going to be an eyesore? <clears throat> I mean, how many of these cans are you? It's only one of each. One of each. One of each? Yes, sir. And, and, and um, so. Who's going to monitor them and exchange them when they're full? Well, I know that our, our member, um, John Smerdin, right. he handles this already for other locations, and he's he's very anxious to get another spot to be able to do this, especially the aluminum tabs. I mean, it's like five cents a tab. Yeah, just and a tab. It's five cents. Yeah, yeah we, it's still. been doing it for years. It's been yeah. going on for years. Yeah, and so even at home, if you want to choose Go towards them. It's, it's recycling and it's getting money and it's all It is a good cause. Okay, I'll make, I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. The last thing, the CAC will be discussing your proposed amendments to Code 151 at our next meeting, which will be held on Wednesday, April 10th at the Marlboro Library at 6.30. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You're welcome. You're Thank welcome. you. One other uh, committee uh, thing I will say uh, this uh, Saturday is the Easter um, uh, event at the Sports Dome in Milton. Um, what time does it start? It starts at, at 9.30. You can do 9.30? Yeah, oh. 9.30 you get in 10 o'clock it starts. I should know. I just posted this again no. today. It's 9.30 and 10. Ed, you know? Yep, positive. You got it? Be positive. Mm -hmm. You're right, Ed. Doors open at 9.30, starts at 10. You got it. Doors open at 9.30 at the Hudson Valley Sports Dome for the Easter Egg Dash. So anybody has any kids, come on up. The rec committee does a great job. Uh, the Easter Bunny will be there. There's candy being handed out. Um, hey, the Easter I thought you were the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I can't fit. I can almost fit the costume. No, uh, we got the Easter Bunny. We got the real Easter Bunny coming, Dave. Come oh, on. okay. Come on. Come on. So uh, that's on that. Um, new business, the 284 agreement motion to sign. So this is we do every year uh, with the county. So uh, Supervisor Corcoran, please accept the completed section 284 agreement for the expenditures of highway monies. Please sign both copies at the next board meeting and return to my office so I can submit to Ulster County Commissioner of Public Works to our town clerk's office. Thanks, John Alonji, Highway Superintendent. And uh, this is something we have to do every year. This is our 284 agreement for highway monies. So as long as you guys are okay, I'm going to pass this around. Do we need a motion? And you just have to uh, sign it. So we need a motion to sign the 284 agreement. I make a motion for you to sign the 284 agreement. I second that. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. All right. And before I forget, and there's two copies, so you got to do it twice. <coughs> I'm going to do it right now. Too many today. So
So as we're doing that, I'm going to bring a so open board discussion tonight. I'm sure a bunch of you are here to the, hear what the board has uh, been thinking about for the last months for the Ridgeline code changes and uh, taking everybody's input, um, taking the CAC's input. Uh, I just want to say there's been a lot of um, interest in this, which is great. And like I said, many other meetings, I, I really, really like that. I really do like everybody's input. Um, <clears throat> you know, both sides. Um, so, you know, we take a lot of that into consideration. Um, I do want to say, I, I, you know, I was a little shocked, I mean, maybe not too shocked, but that we uh, got that much uh, attention because I didn't think it was um, a huge change to the code, but I, then, I, then I thought about it and, you know, okay, the 50 foot is a, is a big difference from a visual. But I know there was a lot of, ish, a lot of people uh, worrying about runoff and water and issues like that. Um, but that part of the code really wasn't changed. And I, when we had our meeting uh, last week with uh, Pat Hines and I had all the department heads there, um, you know, I, I asked them multiple times throughout the meeting, what we're looking at changing has nothing to do with runoff and water and anything like that. And he goes, no, it's basically all for visual, this section. He said, the other section of the codes in this law are more for the runoff and the water problems that could occur. He says, your biggest issue with water, and I think I mentioned this multiple times, your biggest runoff of water problems are roads, driveways, um, and the slope. And so all those things are still kept in the code. That was never changed in the code. It was always in the code. Basically, what we were looking for is to give a, an applicant more flexibility on their lot, to move their lot. So we wanted to get it also a little more clarity to the code because there was a lot of concerns about what a ridge line is, what a tree line is, and where do those start and where do those end. So what I'm going to do for the board, and I don't know if you guys want to sit down there or you want to stay up here and we can move that board, but I want to go through the ridge line slope law itself. Because, you know, we talked about one section of this code for months on end. Um, and I kind of got feedback that people, some people didn't think that we even had a ridgeline law or that we were like stripping that anybody could go up there and build anywhere they wanted on the ridgeline. I got a lot of like, I want to say crazy, but a lot of like people that were, uh, you know, very, very concerned that we were allowing a lot of things to happen on the ridge. But if you actually go through the code, that wasn't the case. Um, so I'm going to point out a few of the, the ones that I like think are very important to this code. So like another, number C, construction control limits disturbances of sleep slopes to be limited to the following. And this is the one that really protects your drainage. Again, we didn't touch this. This was in the code. It was always in the code since 2005, and we weren't altering this. You ha it's got to be less than 50% for all activities, 15 to 25% all activities subject to review and approval by individual grading plan, and more than 25% no disturbance permitted other than they are provided. So you still had these protections. They were always there. We weren't changing them. They were staying in there. So there are exceptions, though. The above construction control limitations to a sleep slope are not applicable for isolated sleep slopes with an area of a total of 10,000 square feet or less to the applicants under this consideration. Tom, you want to elaborate on that? That means you're given an exemption if they, if the, if they had an a, a area of 10,000 square feet or less. Is that saying that they could, act, they, they could be exempt from a lot of the codes? All right, so if you have a, a, a piece of property that's only 10,000 square feet, it's an actual buildable lot, and that's the only space you have that you could build on, and it happens to be 
not um, coinciding with our, our laws, you can get an exemption from the engineer right off the bat that you're exempt from all these, from not all of them, but a majority of these codes. So meaning if you had like an acre of land and you couldn't build anywhere else, you can't make a law that's going to say you can't build on your property like that, right? So there are exemptions here. Again, it has to be approved by the engineer. So, and it's, and it's, it's been in there, it's there. So that could be done right now without us changing anything. Also, the lot grading, driveway, drainage plans for all the lots proposed duration of a 15% to 25% or uh, area, the lot grading, driveway, and our drainage plan shall be approved by town engineer prior to issuance of a subdivision approval or a building permit. So basically before you, you, you do it, you can get a permit, you got to have the engineer to approve all these things. And that's basically what happened in the situation that, that precipitated this to look, to review, is the applicant went to get a building permit, the engineer said they wouldn't sign off on it, and that's where this part of the code comes into play, right? There are protections in the code. They were in there all the time. Again, we didn't change any of this. They're there. They've always been there. We're not changing them. I think a lot of people didn't understand a lot of what we were changing had nothing to do with all these protections that were still in the code. They weren't being changed. The engineer has to sign off on all these and then it has to go through the building department and the, and the code enforcement officer to verify that all, everything is correct to the code. So this section deals with that. All right, number six, should it, in the opinion of the town engineer application of these two provisions render a lot that these existed at the time of the code is adopted, unbuildable application of these regulations may be modified by the town engineer to represent the allowable use of the land, intent and provisions. Now I'm reading this, Tom, and if you read this for me, if this, if the person had a buildable lot prior to the code being put in place, they could get an exemption by the town engineer to still utilize that property. Is that correct? Right. Right, and that's in a lot of our code, but again, has been in the code since 2005, it's there. You can get an exemption if you had a lot prior to 2005 to build on a property. We're not saying, we're not doing anything to the ridge other than allowing what's allowable within our code, right? All right, and everybody, I think, I know the CAC had this, uh, I know, share to get you to map. We have an actual ridgeline protection map that was produced, and it's part of our ridgeline uh, code. And I don't know if everybody realizes, this all pertains to only houses or lands that are 750 feet above, right? The ridge, that's, that, that's where, as you go up the ridge, you have to hit the 750 mark, and then after that, it then pertains to you. Anything below 750, you're free to and clear to build as normal building codes without pertaining to the ridgeline code. So that was still there. The termination of the presence of the ridgeline above the mentioned shall be done on the map provided by the applicant with topography depicted at a two foot counter intervals. This one kind of confused me a little time, but I know you know what it means. Really not that intense two feet. They usually do them at 10 or 20 foot intervals. So if he 
question, yep. but I need to look at two for intervals on the topography map. So the surveyor goes out, it's going to be a much more intense survey and a much more intense topography uh, evaluation of the land. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if anybody's seen maps before of when you're building, but the topography maps, you know, you got all those little lines in there. It tells you how steep something is as you go up. The closer the lines are, the steeper the slope. That's how they typically run. And like Tom said, normally you would get a map and it would maybe be 10 to 12 feet as you go up that mountainside or the hillside, whatever it may be. In the code, it's already been in there. You technically have to give them a topo map of every two feet. You got to give that slope so, so you know how steep it really is. So it, it's, 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 it's very intense. So here's the section that we were looking at changing. Application for the construction of a property in which the section applies shall demonstrate to the reviewing board, the town engineer, as a case may be. And what it said is the proposed building or structure will not extend above the predominant tree line. No structure that is subject to this section shall be located closer than 50 feet in elevation to the ridge line affected by the application as determined by the engineer. Tom, you want to you wanna do the the drawing for me <laughs> come on you're the drawer can you tell show on there what that actually shows on the what that is to the public and the board if you guys want to go out and see what we're talking about I'll wait till he finishes so this is what the code says you, as of now Just to be clear, that's for any permit, no matter ridge line or anywhere, right? Yeah, this is your general, this is general permit. <coughs> this is what I need, this is what I need. Now that we're in the ridge line, these are contours, right? This is, this is what it is. And again, closer the lines, the steeper the ridge. So generically, on the planning board,
is here, let's say at the highest point at some point, and know that our ridge line running north to south on 7.2 miles, give or take. So the highest point of the ridge we're talking about is obviously here, right? This is the highest point of the ridge that we can't build on. But realize, as the ridge declines, and I get a valley here, there could be another ridge here. And then maybe another ridge here as we come down. So every single one of these points are considered top of ridge line as you look from the east. So what, what it's saying is you have to build theoretically in the valleys at some point. Now, if one of your ridges has a contour like this with a, with a slighter decline, it obviously makes it easier to build, right? So we, we, this again is high point of the ridge. Again, remember, the highest point of the ridge looking at it from the east doesn't ne necessarily make this the highest point and you've got to use the number from here. It's each part of these hills or mountains become part of the ridge as you look from the east. So every single one of these points, according to the code, are not building locations. All right. So these are not building locations. Obviously, you know, building on the side of, a, of the hill is, is difficult. And again, we're not telling you if a lot is almost impossible to build on and there really is only one location that maybe you, you, you can build here. Because if, if this is somebody's lot here and this is somebody's lot here and so on as we, we quadrant the ridge off, potentially this can be. But if not, if determined by the engineer that you could build somewhere back, say, over here, then he's going to say you have to build over here. So the ridge line becomes multiple faceted. So when I look at the building permit and you're going to build here, I get to use the ridge here in Marlboro and that's the point that you've got to build below so we're not on top of the ridge. Now if you're building over here, let's say you want to build a little higher. I don't use this part of the ridge. You don't look horizontally this way from the east and say, well, the ridge behind me is higher because I've got to use the highest point of the ridge on the lot that I'm giving the building permit for. So that, you know, as explained to me. So again, I've got to use whichever ridge is the highest point behind you. So if this ridge is behind you, I've got to use this. If you say, well, if I look here and beyond this ridge, as I look up, I'm below this ridge, it just doesn't work. You have to use the ridge that corresponds to where you're building in front of. Other than that, you have to build in the valley. Or Tom, like... Tom, that's over 750. Everything, everything here is 750. You're under 750, I don't care. You're not in the ridge that's line. Then we go... If you're under 750, then all I care about is this. The house with the building envelope, with the 75, the 45, the 50, and the 35. Don't care about the topos if you're under 750. All right? If you're... When you're over 750. That's correct. So what I do is I, when I get my section block and lot, I'm going to have to correspond it not only to my map in my office, I'm going to have to go to the ridge line map and see if that lot falls within the ridge line, which has already been predetermined at 750 plus. Once I determine it's in the ridge line at 750 plus, you could have the flattest lot in the world at 750, and you're still going to have to go do the topos for me and do that extensive map with the two, two foot intervals. Now those two foot intervals might not be even relevant if it's a flat lot. But if it's a flat lot in the ridge, and that's where you own, and it's determined that you can't build anywhere else on this lot, then the engineer will come in and say, yeah, you can build on top. But that's an engineer call, that's not my call. That's gotta go through him first before it gets to me before I issue the building permit. So, we're, so in theory, on the, on, the, on the ridge, they want you building what I would Define is a valley because this is a high point. This is a high point between the high two high points is the valley So they want you built in the valley or Anybody could build in the side of a mountain you could build it over here, but you've got to build with this in, in determined now the the original code was They would shoot the elevation at the highest point of the ridge no matter which part of the ridge we're talking about all right, and then the 50 foot was being measured to grade, you know, to the grade point. It wasn't to the roof line. It wasn't anywhere else. 
And that was a little, honestly, that was confusing to me because in the building code, we always use the furthest point, just like, just like in this, this here. When I, you've got to use the furthest point. So if somebody wanted to build their house over here, this was the building envelope as I see it with the 45 foot setback. If somebody wanted to build their house on the corner, which is legal, but then they want to put a deck on it, you couldn't do it because again, I've got to go from the furthest point. So when I looked at the ridge line requirement and it said 50 feet from, from the highest point, I was always going to the furthest point. I was going to here to the top of the roof, but it was later told me at a clarification as all this came out over the last handful of months that you shoot from grade. So basically if you're, if the highest point is here, I have to be 50 foot from here, from grade up this way. So this was my 50 foot. I always assumed it was from the, from, the, from the highest point of the elevation. I was shooting from here to here 50 because my code always tells me that, that my setbacks are always done from the closest point of the building structure to the property line. So I was, I was using what I know as far as setbacks from property lines, I was using the same setback to the roof line, which wasn't, wasn't true, it was, to, it was to grade. Here nor there, it really didn't matter much. But, but that's the, the intent of what's going on here. So the 50 foot that was originally in the code was to, to grade. Now, the only thing I didn't like about that is that, you know, you have your ridge and here's your highest point and you're gonna build here because 50 feet was determined that way. Now this could be a three-story house, all right, that was built for a millionaire and he built a $50 million house over here. But now I've got somebody who just wants to build a simple, you know, log cabin out in the woods on his property. Now he had to, he had to basically build to the same, you know, same height that he was building here. This was the highest point he could build his ranch was to this point. I believe that if I have a ranch, I should be able to build at the highest point to here. So my ranch should be able to build at this level, not at this level. So I was trying to, you know, my, my thought was to clean the code up would be go to the highest point. You take that number, whatever it might be, to the highest point of the roof line. So whether you build a $50 million three-story mansion or you build a single-story log cabin, I'm everybody's on equal playing field. I'm about everybody being on an equal playing field, no matter how much money you have or don't have. So I want, I want to roof line or to the highest point of the structure. So if I go to the highest point of the structure, it doesn't matter if I build a three-story, I build a one-story, we're all building at the same elevation. Because obviously to build on the ridge, the whole idea is my interpretation is to see the view looking, you know, you look at west. Tom, good question for you. So with the silencer still has to be under 25% grade? Yeah. Right, the, the grade requirement that's in there, it's 25, 15, and 0 to 15. There, there's an area at, at 25 on that slope line, which they're saying you can't build. If the slope is, is 25, you, you just can't build here. So, you know, so you, you, need, you need the grade to kind of level out. So, again, when I say building in a valley, you know, you have to get down in the valley because, again, because your percent of grades, you're right, at 25% or more, being on that high slope, the code is saying this whole area is unbuildable. You, know, you can't build here. You have to look for another spot lower in the valley. So you have to build lower in the valley, or again, if the grade is, is less, I mean, that's where, that's where you want to build. You want to build where the grade is less. But yet, yeah, any of these high peaks, you know, these are all unbuildable areas because they don't meet that 25% grade rule, you're correct. So that throws out any portion thereof on, on the side of that slope. That mess, yeah. Whatever you want. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I love your drawings, it's great. Yeah, they're great. You gotta be here to understand it, I guess. But I, I mean, I don't know. You got another question. I mean, that, that's. I mean, like, just some simplicity, too, is like, <clears throat> like Tom said, like, uh, you have uh, slopes like this, like that. And then, like, so the current code, this is your bridge line, right? And I'm not 
you know, unlike radars with easier trees. So we had a question of what's a ridge line, what's a tree line, right? So this is your tree line. This is the ridge line. This is your ridge line, right. And then on the, and on the current code, you got to be 50 feet, right? Down. So say this is 50 feet. That's where you have to be. Your base of your house has to be 50 feet below the ridge line. Same thing here. The base of the house, the roof of the house. The current code. Current code base. Base of the house is 50 feet, right? That's the current code. That's how it's interpreted. You've got a 50 foot buffer in between here and the ridge line. Okay, no matter if you have a two story house, a one story house. That's but understand what that's saying. So understanding that from the ridge line, and correct, not the tree line, from the ridge line to the base on grade at 50 feet here, and you build what our code allows you to build 35 feet you're 15 feet from the top of the ridge. That's where the house roof is at this point. So you have 50 feet as your grade. I built a 35 foot house. The top of your roof, I call structure, this fireplace, you know, antenna as well. The structure is only 15 feet from the top. So you only get 15 feet of buffer at this point because your maximum height is 35 feet that I could allow to build. So. Does everybody understand that part? They got what the current code basically says? Do you understand that? I, I understand it, but I don't, I don't agree with what you're talking about. It's still too, it's too strict to the man though, that we have it there. To me, there's only one ridge line from north to south. You're showing multiple ridge lines. They're not. That's my, your interpretation, but then you're not, right? Yeah. Well, there's multiple ridge lines. I, I'm offering a different interpretation. I know what you're saying. And I asked this question at least 10 times to the engineer who wrote the code. Yeah. There's more than I one can, bridge line. I can show you an example. You want to show you an example? Well, I, I, there's plenty of examples of bridge lines that, like right here. There's, there's, we know that there's higher bridges than there's valleys. We're in a valley, right? I, 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 I asked him point blank because I think, I thought, if you're looking from the east, right? If you're looking this way, right. and it's the east, and you built on this top of this ridge, right? I said, well, you're really not going to see this because you're seeing this behind it, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Makes sense? Yes. That's not the code. Well, I'm saying I'm saying the code is wrong. Well, I'm just telling you, that's the way, I'm just telling you, that's the way it is right now. Right? Well, okay, so we can change that. We could change whatever we want to change. That's the what point of this meeting. So okay. the board has to make a decision. I'm going to tell but you. My, my, I'm going to allow you to I'm going to be devil's advocate to that, too, because I want to know what's the intent of the ridge line in, in your eyes? Is it the visual point from the east? To the highest point, yes. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it is the idea of this whole talk, and, is it the visual aspect of seeing a house from the east? Is that, is that the point? No. It's no. not, right? no. so, so you don't care seeing, you don't care seeing a house no. from the east? No. Okay. I only care about seeing a house on top of the ridge. That's my only objection. I don't care how high it is. At the, the highest, highest point of the ridge. <clears throat> Through the ridge, there's only one ridge in my mind. I, I, for example, there's only one ridge. It's the highest point as you go from Orange County to Town of Lloyd, 7.7 .7 miles. The ridge does move in and out. There's 900s here and 900s there, thousands of here. It's one ridge, and it's the highest point. But you can't say, you can't say yeah. that because if you call it one ridge, then what, what, what's What's the what's this on this side in Platico? Is that part is that part of the ridge? There's nothing there. Is that part of the the highest point? Is that but if that was the case and I had a 7.2 mile ridge yes. and you're calling there's one ridge yes. and Platico exceeds our highest point of the it ridge. It doesn't. I, I, you're, you're giving me a generic and I'm giving you a generic because you want you want I don't want it, it, it because our code is our code but you, you're saying. It shouldn't be, but I want to say, if Platteville had a higher point, yes. is that part of the ridge or not? No. Um, the ridge, not Marlboro's ridge, the ridge. Part, is it part of Platteville? No, not a ridge. It's part of the ridge. It's but the Rocky ridge. Mountains that go through uh, X amount of counties and towns and cities and states, is that not the Rocky Mountains? Is that not the ridge? Is that not the highest point of the ridge? It's a moot point because there's no ridge in the 
highest point is Marlboro. Once you cross the Marlboro Mountains, it dis becomes flat field and it goes downhill. It goes lower. I've studied this for a long time. If it didn't, would it be part of the ridge? <coughs> but there's no. It wouldn't be part of the ridge. No, but it's, it's not. It's not Marlboro. Uh huh? It's not Marlboro. But, but we're talking, but you're, but you're still talking visual. You're saying visual from the east. Yes. I don't want to see a house at the highest point. Yes. So if I was in Marlboro and there was a ridge, the same ridge was behind me, and I go to the highest point in Marlboro, there'd still be a ridge behind me. You still wouldn't see it from, from the east, and you're basically contradicting what you're saying here, that you don't want to see the house on top. So if these, two, if these three points are in Marlboro, but this point is in Platyhill, why couldn't I build on this? Because your point is if I'm looking from the you east. Can. You can. You can. You want to build on the top. Not the different township. Different township. I'm talking about Marlboro. I'm talking, you're talking about the ridge. Yes. Right. So the ridge would be part of Platyhill. It's the Marlboro Ridge. All right. You just, ridge. you just said when I look from the east, yes. I don't care if these houses are on top of this hill. Because there's always going to be a higher ridge behind it. Correct. Correct. Why couldn't I build on here if there was a higher ridge behind me? You can. You can. But there is none. But then you're saying you don't care. You don't care that you build at the highest point. There's only one high point. I'm only worried about Marlboro. I can't worry about Platte Hill. If we're too worried about Marlboro, why are we worried about how they, they look from the east? I can stand anywhere in Marlboro and I would never see this house here. I can say anywhere in Marlboro, I never see that house on top of the ridge. Nowhere. I can be on top of Quimby's barn. So maybe, maybe I see that over there because I'm on top there. But if I'm standing on Latin Town Road, I'm standing on 9W, I'm standing anywhere else in Marlboro, you can't see this house except for the east. We're worried about the east. We're worried about the Gibson right now. We don't care that they built the Galleria, Trap Rock and everything else they build, right, but whatever. So we're worried about looking from the east. So if we're worried about looking from the east, why can't he build here if there was a higher point here? You say you don't care, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a higher point behind it, you don't care. Okay. So you're basically saying that any of these points here, you don't care if we're- I don't care. care. Is that, that in this room? Because I stand in the Let me ask, let me, show my hands in this room. Would you, approve of a house on top of these ridges as long as this ridge behind it was I just want to get a, a consensus. No. Would you approve of that? No, I approve of it. So I got one yes. out of everyone. So you're saying even these ridge lines here, not on top. Is that what everybody's saying? Now you're, now you're on top of your side of land on this side. It's too strict. No, I, I'm just trying to right. 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 I get both sides of the story. I want to get a consensus of where everybody is. Because there's gonna, multiple. I'll give you an example. My house, all right, my house is at 800, 802 feet elevation. I'm in the ridge line zone, right? If you look at mine from the north to south, the 750 kicks, kicks the rule in, right? My house is here at 800, and Tommy's looking at the ridge, the highest point on my property. No, it's not the highest point on your property. Pardon? It's not the highest point on your property. No, it's not. It, it's not. It's the ridge behind, the highest point on the ridge behind you, which could be the highest point or it could be this one. No, no, you said it had to be within the confines of my... That was our conversation two months ago before this all got clarified. I'm saying it has to be the ridge behind you. It doesn't, it's not on your property, it's the ridge behind you. We're saying there's multiple ridges when you look from the east. That's not only what the code says and I'm interpreted as it was defined by the engineer. And I think I'm, everybody else is in agreement there's multiple ridges. You don't want to see houses on the top of these ridges, unless I'm wrong. I'm okay with it. But, yeah, I, I... I mean, that's a board decision, too. Like, that's part of this why I'm having this discussion, so the board can weigh in here. What is some of your guys' opinion about this scenario? The scenario, say you had a bridge, say this was 750, this was 1,000, and this is 1,200, let's just say, right? Are you okay with the house on these two ridges along from the east? No, you're still it's going to drop it down 50. I'm asking, go, I'm, asking board, I'm asking my board. I'm asking my board right now. Okay, I, I, I'll get to you guys. What are you guys? Doing? Well, I'm a little bit confused. So the, the one on the lower one right there, okay, that one right there. If I want to build on top of that, what is is the middle one the one that it, it's covering? It would be this one. The 
depends. Because, because we're building at two foot pontoons, it depends where you build on this ridge. If you build in front of it, and more than two feet higher is the ridge, then you've got to use this one. If you build behind it, then you use this one. So I've got to look at where exactly you're putting your house. Yeah, it depends on where your house is. And two feet contours from there, I've got to determine what point of that ridge I'm using. Am I using the ridge here? Because you're building on this side? And based on the two foot contour, I mean, you've got to be down a little bit, that'd be less than two feet down, and then the, the roof line would have to be down. Or are you building on this side? So the answer to that question is depends where you build, on which, which, which one I'm using. On this side, that equals that. Let me do that. If that doesn't come into play, it's then easy. anybody in front of that has to use this ridge. This becomes another valley, and we start using these points. Each point is individually. So you're from the east, at what point from the east? Are we looking from 9W point, or are we looking from this point, this point, and this point of the east? It's the Marlboro Ridge Line, as you had stated. Well. Again. Specifically, the engineer said it's the Marlboro Ridge Line only. It doesn't take into effect any other ridge line but the Marlboro Ridge Line. So there's an invisible barrier, per se, right? If there's another ridge line in front of you or in back of you, it only pertains to the 7.2 miles of Marlboro Ridge Line. Which is a question we asked him point blank. Does it pertain to any other ridge line? Our code specifically says the Marlboro Ridge Line. In theory, the ridge line is going to be specific to the ridge that pertains to the building permit you get. So there's, there's multiple ridges. So, so then the high, I get what you're saying. If there's a higher ridge and you can't see nothing, and it's behind it, it's in the valley. Dave, what do you think? Well, the question is here is, come over here. Sir. No, no, I can see. Because it's, so if you have a lower no, ridge here, right. a lower ridge no. here, but then the highest ridge is here. Are you okay with building on this and this ridge at the top as long as this ridge is higher? I, I think the main problem here, and I think we can all be in agreement, is it, it's, it doesn't matter what, how I interpret it, Tommy interprets it, anybody in the audience interprets it. The man that wrote no, but let me clarify. The man that wrote the code, we've had several meetings with this gentleman, and he interprets his way, which is what we're trying to follow. So I can see that there's a lot of disagreement here. And I got to tell you the truth. I sat on several meetings. Every time I thought I understood this code, I didn't. And I don't think, I think I can speak for most of us at that meeting. It, it's very confusing. Now, I can go back to a couple meetings ago we had at the library, and we had a gentleman stand up in the back and practically scream at us and tell us we were a bunch of idiots in layman's terms. If you don't understand English, that's the only reason why you wouldn't understand this code. Well, we got 30 people here tonight, and I don't think any of us understand it totally because we keep asking questions. We keep contradicting ourselves. So I, I don't know. I, you know, my, you want my, I, I could give you my opinion, but it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter at all because everybody, everybody in this room has their own opinion, and you're not going to change it. But I'm going to say something on a personal level. When I, wait a minute, wait a minute, when I, when I, when this all first came about and we had those meetings and whatnot, I was addressed by Mr. Millar and I'm going to apologize to him because he did stand up and say, you know, I question anybody sitting on the board that owns part of the Ridge Line should be able to vote. And I do own Ridge Line. I own 13 acres on the Ridge Line. And after I had a visitation with Mr. and Mrs. Glory at their beautiful home, they opened my mind up to different different views. And then I had two private meetings with Melissa Quimby, came to my office, and we had a great yep. conversation. And I really changed a lot of my views. But I'm going to apologize to Ted because I, I know I got irate and I said, you know, yeah, I know you're directing at me. And no, I'm not going to recuse myself. Well, guess what? I am going to recuse myself because, you know, I, even though I changed a lot of my views and had discussions with Doug's wife, and Melissa, and I feel that, you know, that probably is in my best interest. So I can sit here and tell you what my opinions are and, and what my feelings are, but I don't think it much matters at this point. Well, it matters because we make the decision. Whatever the well, engineer says, 
you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, criti I'm going to be criticized because I own part of the Ridgeline. And, and truth be known, I bought, I bought my property in 92, before any of this was, was up. And, and shame on me, but 20 years ago when this was all going on because of the subdivision up on Mount Zion Road, like anybody, I was 20 years younger, I was very busy, I was confined in my business. I didn't even know there was a freaking Ridgeline until this, this whole thing came about. I didn't know there was a Ridgeline law. I'll be honest with you. My biggest concern was I bought property in 92, and nobody in this audience or anybody on the board is going to tell me what I can and can't do. And that was my, that was my take on it. But after reviewing it and looking at different aspects, I can understand everybody's view. My only problem with any of this is it's the way you interpret it. And, and the way I interpret it is going to be different from the way Jerry interprets it, the way that Elsie's going to interpret it. Everybody's going to have their own interpretation. And I think until we can agree, we're, we're never going to, nobody's going to be happy. I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to change the code. We're going to have meetings. We're going to do it gingerly. But in the end, I don't think a person that wants to build on a ridge is going to be happy. And I don't think any of the people that want to restore the ridge is going to be happy. Honestly, I wrote a letter to the paper. I'm sure you've all read it. And I got criticized for it. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I lived in this town for 57 years. Did I know there was a ridge line? Sure I did. Did I ever pay attention to it? Nope. I'm going to tell you the truth. I never did. I drive down all the back roads and I never really much look up. But after all this came up, I started paying attention. And I took a ride. I went down Latin Town Road and I looked up and I saw a beautiful log cabin with a, with, a, with a windmill. I had my girlfriend with me and I said, boy, look at that. That's beautiful. And I think we made a turn by the Latin Town Garage and we went up a little further up the road. And I said, oh, look, there's another log cabin. And she said, you idiot. It's the same house that you just talked about two minutes ago. I didn't even, I can't count five houses on the ridge that I can see. So you're bringing this to everybody's attention now, which I never paid attention, but what about all the crap leading up to the ridge line? That, that's what I'm more concerned about. I get you on a reserve, but here we are, here we are, the bunch of us are fighting over someone that came before us, the only one in 19 years, and I'm not being partial to that applicant. No disrespect to you, Mr. Santini, but I don't even like the kid. So I, don't, I, I, I hate to be insinuated that I'm, because I've heard it down at Delhi and all over the place, you guys are changing this law for one person. No, we're not. It was brought to our attention. I never even knew about it. And, and, and we are examining all, all the different avenues that we can take. But the crap leading up to the ridge line, I'm more embarrassed about that. And I was criticized by a rebuttal in the paper. You know, oh, if you don't like what you see going up to the ridge line, maybe you should tell the code enforcer and make him do his job. Well, wait a minute. I mean, I mean, I can probably pull everybody in this audience, and I bet you every one of us has a, 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 a violation. I can tell you for sure. We all do. It, it'd be impossible to do that. So if we all want to put our efforts into one applicant in 19 years, well, that's what we're here for. But at the same time, it, it, it saddens me to be a member of this community and think that we can look at trash in people's overgrown yards and tarps thrown throughout and quants and huts in the front yard that isn't supposed to be there and a motor home with a big orange tarp over top of it eight months out of the year. That's okay. Nobody says a word about it. But one person wants to put a house up on the ridge and we're, we're all out in droves. And to be honest with you, I, I don't even, I, like I said before, and maybe I just speak for myself, but I don't even notice the few houses that are on the ridge right now. So that, that's my two cents. You can take it for what it's worth. Got any more? No. Very good. Very good. Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. All right? Like I told you from the beginning, everybody's not happy. Everybody's not going to be happy, right? But it's not going to be. It's not full out of the Again, here's your bridge line. Up. What we're going to do is we're not basing it off the foundation of the house, we're basing it off the roof line of your house, <clears throat> which is not just the roof line, it's going to be called the structure. The structure is inclusive of chimneys, vents, any kind of uh, structure that comes off the top of your roof. The highest point of that structure. So the highest point of the structure, if this is it, it could go right there. All right, it could go right to the top of the ridge line. Can't go above it. You got the tree line's gonna be here. But you could, if this is your, here, your roof could be right here. All right, that's, 
There's not going to be a 50 foot rule. It's going to go off the roof line, the ridge line, and the highest part of your structure. It's not going to go above the tree line. Gives a little more leeway. So if you have a two story house or you have a one story house, you can move it up more. But it's going to go off of right here. From the east. From the east. Same thing. That's not changing. It's from the east. It's off the ridge line, and I'll read you what we're doing. Now I put some definitions in here. Again, the board we can discuss these further. We don't, you know, there's nothing pushing us to this. Yes. Um, and that's the purpose of this meeting. The purpose of this meeting is the workshop meeting for the town. Because we're not allowed to just meet and sit and talk to each other because that's a forum. So we can't do that. The only way we can do that is in the public, like we're doing right now. That way that we're not being, uh, doing anything underhand. So I appreciate all the input, and I'll take more input. But technically, this is for us on the board, and you are here watching us as we talk. All right? And I need to get input from you guys. Because I've been dealing with this for four months, and I really need to get input because we've got to make a decision. So. What we're looking to change it is, and this week we, we talked to our engineer and he gave us some guidance on some wording how to do this. He assured me this aligns with our master plan. He assures us it aligns with our, uh, um, 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 the, making the um, town still what it is, that it's not going to uh, do anything with the water problems, because this is all vision. But it does align with our master plan. So is that structure should not use bright or fluorescent colored materials. Structure shall use natural coloring that 
basically you're getting an additional 15 feet. That's really good. Right? Just but if you're one story house, you're going to move up 35 feet yes. because you're not based on the 50 foot, right? Because if it's a two story house, it's 35 feet, a one story house would be, and then the roof line, 10 to 12 feet, right? So you don't have to move up a little further. Basically, as long as you're top of your structure, inclusive of chimneys, anything that comes off the top of your roof line, that's the highest point. Whatever that highest point is, doesn't exceed the ridge line. So now when you're looking east, right, coming out, you're going to see a tree line, right? You're not going to see a rooftop, right? That's basically where it is. Like I told everybody from the beginning, everybody's not going to be happy, right? But this is a compromise. In my opinion, it's a compromise. It is we're allowing you to move up, we're not allowing you to build around on top. That's the You want me to get a point again? I, I personally just think it's too restrictive, but I mean, I, I do understand the other side, my opposing side, I understand it, but I'm not going to lie to you. I think, it, you know, me being a Ridgeline owner, I think it's a little bit too restrictive, but I'm on board with it. I mean, I think, it, you know, we're going to have to compromise. There are, there are exceptions, but if you, there are exceptions, I understand that, but in my situation, I worked hard my whole life. I bought in the mountain because I wanted to live on the mountain. I wasn't able to build where I wanted to build when I was 25 years old. I have a son. He's going to be 29. He hasn't built a house yet. But if he wants to take my top lot, which is on top of the ridge, and build a house, I just don't feel, like you said, maybe he'll fall under the threshold, but maybe he won't. And I've been paying taxes on land for over 30 years, and now somebody's going to tell me where I can and can't build? I don't agree with it. I understand the preservation, but then I look at the whole as a whole and I go, in 19 years we'd have one applicant. I, I pay attention to the ridge now and I don't see a lot of houses. So I mean, it's almost, like, it's almost like we're opening this up and everybody now is paying attention to it. And quite honestly, most of the people in Marlboro, no disrespect, I don't think, I don't think we have enough money to, to put a road up to get to the top of the ridge. But I'll tell you who do. Those 4,000 people that come here every weekend from the city, a million dollars of those people is nothing. And I think we're making a big PR situation out of this, and I think, I think you're going to actually find now that people that live in the city and are getting to retirement age may be thinking, you know what, I, I, I thought I was going to move to the country and buy a lot on the river. Well, now maybe they're going to want to move to the ridge and buy a lot on the ridge. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is going to backfire on all, all of us. I mean, I, I, that's, that's my... That's my thing on it. I mean, I, I, I can sympathize and I can understand about preserve the ridge, but I can also sympathize with somebody that's owned property for 30 years has been paying taxes on it. And now after, all right, so due to math, 92 to 2005, it wasn't 30 years later, but I wasn't even aware of the ridge line law and shame on me for not realizing it. I don't think I'm the only one that didn't realize it. I think, I think when this all came about, everybody was kind of shocked. It was like, what are you talking about, ridge line? We didn't even know there was a ridge line law, I, but we all know about it now. I do think you were right on that point 100%. I don't think people realized there was even a code no. in existence. I think a lot of people were um, under false pretenses of how they were interpreting the code as it was still written. Um, I think they thought the board was doing something that was going to affect more than that they were saying in some cases. What, what, I, what I didn't like was... Yeah, absolutely. I'm not arguing that. The, the scuttlebutt on the street is, and it's been from day one, is that, and I hear it all because I'm down to Delhi every morning and I frequent a lot of businesses and I know a lot of people and we talk a lot and a lot of the opposing opposers of my side say, well, I just don't understand why you people are going to make a change for one person. And that's totally out of line. It's not true at all. And, and, and I mean, and, and, and I'm saddened by that people would actually think that. You think we would sit up here for the last four months for one person? I mean, you've got to be kidding. I mean, this is just, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It could have been anybody.
Once. The answer was one. This person, right? So it was the first time that it came in front of them. The first time that there was an issue when it came in front of them. And I don't know if you guys know how it works. When there's a problem in the planning board, where do you think the applicant comes? To the town board. My office specifically. And they ask us to look at this and say, is there an issue here or not an issue? Because one person is telling me this. And the, pro the other problem is, when it goes to planning, a lot of times they shift it over to zoning. And a lot of times, if they, they don't want to get involved or for whatever reason, they shift it over to, to the town board. And guess what? You know where the buck stops? Right here. So now we, we get the job to piss everybody off, so to speak. Don't want to do it. None of us like to do it. But this is what we signed up for. So just know that I don't think there's going to be any happy parties when this is all said and done. It'll be a compromise and... There is a lighting code, and that's a planning board issue when you go for your site plan. They'll address that at your site plan. Oh, okay. For planning board? Yeah, it's planning board.
Poor Danielle. <laughs> Poor Danielle. Yeah, it's one of the things we looked at last year, and we have not yet got to that um, because a lot of some of the issues are that, um, like, if they're pre-existing, as Tom says, you can't go back. If you pass a code today, I can't go back and make someone change their light. I could only go forward, right? So, and another point about with the building permits, you know, another thing is that came out of all this review actually is it did. Uh, give us review in the building department for when people come in for permits to build that they will get reviewed exactly where they are if they're in the ridge line or not because if people don't understand maybe don't understand either if you have a building lot and it's already there you don't have to go to the planning board right you could just come in get your building permit if everything meets all the codes you pay your fee and you could get a you could get the permission to start building the applicant that this started with, that wasn't the case, right? In his case, he was in the planning board process. They were separating land and they were doing other things. And this, this is how this started. So it's different. It was reviewed by the planning board and then it came to light. So there are two different scenarios that this happened. But now, every time someone comes in for a building permit, they're going to be required to get the SPL. If they're in the, in the, um, uh, the ridge line, there's going to be much more stricter requirements in their application than it is for someone that's just building on a normal lot as far as getting those topos and those maps and all those things that have to go so we know the exact elevation of that house and their property um so that's another thing that came out of this that i think was pretty good so Well, if he split up his acres, he'd have to go to the planning board for that one, right? And there's that section and you mentioned before. You can't separate a piece of property that is at the highest point of the ridge to make it buildable. To make it buildable. To make it buildable. To get the exemption. My point in asking is that because of the truncality subdivision, if you've been up there and seen the parcels up there that are split up, it's pretty hairy about whether you can build or you can build. So I just wanted to know because that's
because he couldn't get a building permit. Because he came in to get his building print, and they said, no, you don't meet the code. Okay. So it worked. It did work. How did we get this far? Did they split the property, but they, can't, they couldn't build in the spot they wanted. They could build somewhere else on that property, right? That's but that's why when you come into the code, you come in to get your, you get your building print, you can't do it. Those are, the, those are the built-in exemptions that are in the code, right? If, you, if that's the only spot you could build on your lot, even if it was 18 acres, right? If it's 18 acres and that happens to be the only spot because the slope everywhere else is no good. Okay, we're going to, does the board have any other questions, concerns about this? No, nope, very good. Dave, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> no, that was a good discussion. I, I, no, that's what this meeting is for. This meeting is for us to, you know, let it out there. And I do, you know, we don't typically have the public even talk there in this time, but I want that feedback. I think it's good feedback. Um, I think we have a structure here. Uh, we'll go through it a little more through emails, but I think, like I said, like I, I kept saying, both sides, we're not getting 100% of what we want, but it, it's somewhere in the middle. And I think uh, that's where we're at at this point. So, and I did want to point out, like I said in the beginning, there were a lot of, and there still are a lot of obstacles to build in the ridge, right? It's not a very easy process to build in the ridge. Um, just from the standpoint of the slopes and the, the cost to do that. So, um, and then I'm gonna move on from that then, all right?
And Tom, thanks for all your explanations. So, no more drawings. No more drawings for you. Not for tonight. You're good. All right. We got any? Uh, I got some public uh, correspondence here. Well, let me do. Uh, oh, it went away. Mary Ann, I got to do yours first. I got to sign back in. Where are you, Marianne? All right, so I'm going to read uh, Miss Quick's letter. I didn't print it out, so I have it on my email. Uh, Dear Supervisor Corcoran, our house is going back on the market for sale by early April. Therefore, it is imperative that we know that the plans for the repair of the collapse of the Old Indian Trail. I'm sure you understand that the prospective buyers are hesitant to look seriously at our home without some kind of an idea as to what this town has planned to repair the Old Indian Trail. Does Old Indian Trail go north or south from our home? The south end of Old Indian Trail is worse than ever. It is disgusting. No more to be said. The path on the north end that started uh, this whole mess is about to collapse. The condition is getting worse each day, including the tree I previously wrote to you about a few weeks ago. Scott, we need to know the plans for this road ASAP. If you don't want to meet or can't meet in person, please give us some kind of an idea in writing. Our home's value is in question through no fault of our own. The road collapse has mentally and physically sickened us, inconvenienced us in an imperable way, and a cost as large sums of money. So not fair to Marianne and Patrick Quick. We did nothing but reside at Old Indian Trail, the Forgotten Road. I'd appreciate a response at your earliest convenience. Also, if possible, i like this email to be read at the town board at 325-24, Marianne and Patrick Quick. And there it is. I read it. And as I stated in my updates, we are meeting with our engineers. I have met with my engineers multiple times. I just got off the phone today with GPI again. Um, so hopefully we'll have that planned by end of this week. Um, and then I got a t I did talk to Central Hudson and they said we can possibly go into their easement, which is what I'm trying to do um, because the landowner won't give us an easement right away. So if I can uh, use Central Hudson's easement uh, we may have enough room there. So that's what the engineer is trying to determine. Is there enough room to do what we need to do in order to uh, make Old Indian Trail a north and south uh, road again? Or do we have to have a turnaround lane put in? So that's what they're trying to determine for us. Uh, what else do I got for... All right, this one is from the Marlboro Free Library. Last year, the Marlboro Free Library hosted the Jester Gym Show at Cluett Chance Memorial Park. Uh, with enormous success, the performance attracted over 100 attendees. Marlboro families applaud the opportunity to witness professional, thrilling, and wholesome entertainment at no cost. The Marlboro Free Library would like to continue this tradition of providing high-quality entertainment to the families of Marlboro by welcoming the Jester Gym Show back this summer. The Marlboro Free Library respectfully requests that the town of Marlboro allow the Marlboro Free Library to use the Cluett Chance Memorial Park Pavilion on July 11th to 2024 from 5 to 7, free of charge uh, to present Jester Jim to our community and thank you. And did you guys look at that date, Danielle? Was it free? So is everybody okay with the Marlboro Free Library uh, using the Park Pavilion on July 11th from sure. 5 to 7? I, I make the motion for you. Give the park that day. I need a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You'll take, you'll call them tomorrow? Thank you. This one is from Highway Superintendent John Alonji, uh, Su uh, Supervisor Corcoran, uh, town board members. Joseph Terska has been an MEO for over a year in the highway department. He has proven to be qualified to run our heavy equipment in his responsible and respectful manner and his dedicated employee. At this point, I would like to promote him to HMEO 
at the hourly rate of $26.26 starting on March 23rd, 2024. Thank you, uh, John Alonji, Highway Superintendent. And that's pretty much per our contract, that's how it goes. So I just need permission to uh, sign off on that for John. So is everybody okay with giving Joseph Tursky? I'll make that motion. motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Uh, have any other public comments tonight? Anybody else? Mary Ann, come on up. Um, first of all, oh, that, turn, that, turn that around for you. Yeah, first of all, Scott, I do want to say I appreciate the cordial emails. Yeah. I think it's a lot better for all of us. Absolutely. Um, I also need to say something sitting here this evening. I only wish that the collapse on Old Indian Trail and the danger that it has presented got just a small amount of attention that the ridge has gotten. I, I can't help but think that. Um, I want to know your communication or your plans with the engineering company. You said you'll be speaking to them by the end of the week. Okay, based on that, will they, because they're planning the, um, the fix of that road, hopefully, will they be the ones, they're the, the, the designers, I guess, will they be the ones to do the work or does that have to go out to a public bid? It depends on the extent of the work at this point. I think we can do it in-house if the extent of the work is what they had said when we were at the site. Okay. But they took all the measurements and they'll determine, you know, obviously there's going to have to be someone to come out. If we do what they want, they want to put a pin part of the road at the top to make a retaining wall of some sort on the west side or, uh, yeah, the west side of the road. I don't understand. Say it again to me, please. So if they do what they want, what they want, what they're thinking of doing is if we can pin into the rock, and that's a, a big if because it's a lot of loose rock. Yeah. If we could pin onto the rock on the west end, right on the edge of that road. Yeah. And put a, uh, like a, a barrier of some kind on that side. And then if we could go over seven feet into Central Hudson's easement, because okay. it's their easement up to the poles. Uh, is there enough room to do that? So we could do that work, but the, you know, obviously we'd have to bid out the the drilling of the holes and stuff and th that nature. Okay. And now again, it has to be determined if that we have enough room. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, I I was under the impression that Central Hudson had a 12 foot easement. Yeah, they have a, a certain amount of easement, but they we can't go past their pole line. So they have their poles, and then they have some easements. Okay. And we can't go I, past their pole. Okay. We, we can't do anything that's going to compromise the pole. So Let's I had, say the pole is five feet in the ground. Their, 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 yeah. their spec is we can that's only another get issue. so close to the pole before it compromises the pole itself, yeah. which could fall in a windstorm. Right. Or whatever. So we got to stay certain that. distance So that's what we're doing it. now. So put it in layman's terms, where your washout is, they want to pin that, put up like a mafia block retaining wall to make it safe, and then pull your roadway over. As, I understand. As far as we can. To the west. Legally. As far as you can. So it's not that we haven't been meeting and it hasn't been that we haven't given it a lot of concern. <laughs> We've it's had a just, lot of it's meetings. The way, it's right. the way things in this world go. You, you hire an engineering firm and they drag your feet. And Scott's on the phone every other day. We need this done. We need this done. And they got 60 other clients that they're worrying about also. It's just the way things are. We know you're frustrated and we feel for you, but we're trying our best Believe me, if it was 30 years ago, I would have gotten my machine myself and I widened know. the road, and it would have I been understand. done by now. But we can't do that anymore. It's, it, there's, there's liability issues that we're, we have to be concerned about. I'm completely aware and of that. that, 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 that thank, you, thank you for discussing that with me. I, I wish that we had had this for the past year, but we haven't. There had been such a shutdown of communication. I was forced to get a lawyer, spend a lot of money for no reason. Yep. Okay, I wish we had had this open line of communication. I tried with Scott, we got nowhere, but that's water under the bridge. I want to get this road fixed. I want to get it fixed for myself because I still live there and for those 
other people that come well, up and down that road because that's the river. We do too. Because we're talking about the ridge line. Yeah, what we about all, the river? We also have town employees that plow that road. So we're, we're anxious to get it done also. Because I know it. If we had to come in from one direction and turn around, it's going to be a nightmare. You can't do it. And, and Well, it, you can, but it's not going to be fun. Yeah, but what about, one moment, what about my home? The people that come, the, the problems that I've had getting deliveries, especially right. oil. I, I had to have my septic cleaned out and it cost me $200 more because they had to spay, spend an extra hour. Those trucks have to come up. It's not fair. It's not right. It's dangerous for them to have to back down yeah. to make a U-turn and go back out south. Well, we, That's we all, crazy. We all got an education on the board of what a road by use. <laughs> oh, yes. Is. We, we had no idea. You know, I'm, as long I'm, as I've been in this town, I always thought that old Indian trail, and I, I realized it's called trail because that's what it was. Yeah, the forgotten, F it, the forgotten road. It is still a trail, but we got educated, and we didn't realize. You know, we just thought, okay, we're going to go and fix it, and, and, and it's, it wasn't that simple, I understand. Unfortunately, unfortunately. I know. I know all about it. Thank so you. I feel it's your pain, been, and we're trying. It, thank you for your conversation. I appreciate it. Um, it has been almost a year. And it's that. time. So, all right, Scott, let me understand. So you're going to meet with the engineers the end of the week, and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the end we'll of have, okay. And I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm just telling you, I just got off the phone with him today. He said the, the gentleman that's working on it should hopefully have something back to me by the end of the week. Okay, it so. It doesn't mean it's going to be. All right, so as, assuming you get it the end of the week, the following week, can we please sit down and have a meeting at that time? so that it's explained to me and Pat. Once I have, like I told you in the emails, once I have everything in place and I know specifically what I'm doing, then I'll sit down with you and explain to you what we're gonna to try to do. All right. I don't wanna give you something and then I, then I hear something from someone else, I can't do it. So I'm not giving false hope. When I know 100% I'm doing this, I understand. that's when I wanna sit down with you and Pat and say this is what we're doing. Because okay. I could t sit down with you and I'm going to tell you something and then three days get la later get a call from someone they tell I me, know. no, that can't happen. I, I, I understand the So theory. when I know I'm going to get a shovel in the ground and we're going to do something, yeah. that's when I want to make and, sure. And hopefully, hopefully, it's to the north. We can get enough. Well, that's, we're hoping too. Like Dave said, we, want. we don't want to, you know, it's hard not to, pl it's hard to do the way it is with plowing and maintaining the road. So, yeah, and it's not fair to that I home. I mean, we Our do home. have room to make a turnaround at the bottom, to be honest with you. We but do. isn't that, so isn't that the neighbor's property? No, not the one section. That's our property. We actually own a little piece of property right on that, right where they turn around there. Oh, okay. That's okay. Why because he, he, he uses it as his own. Right. Yeah, that where his we, boat yeah, is is the town the property. Don't the, go there with that house. The boat is the town property. So that's, it's, we have, it's odd. We have like a little section right there, and that's why we're able to turn around there because we actually own that little piece. So, uh, you yeah. know, if, if that happens to be, no, no matter what, he's got to move that boat. I mean. Well, we've asked him a few times. Uh, he's he, not, he has he's, to move the boat. He, but, yeah, he's not a cooperative. But uh, that's, the, that's the alternative is in that section you would have to probably right. put a turnaround or a hammerhead, as they call it. Yeah. Um, which we don't want to do because, again, it's tougher for us to maintain when we do that. Yeah. Um, and, so. and, and it's not right for our home. Yep. We can't have people backing up. We just can't do it. And we've been doing that three-point turn for one year now. It's, all right. Thank you so much for all your right. time. I appreciate the cordial way we no have problem. been dealing with this. Thank you again. All right, thank you. Any other public comments? Join. Um, when is the proposed change to the town code? How long until that actually happens? I'd love to say next meeting, but it uh, could be next meeting. It could be, but it probably won't be. It could be next meeting. I mean, if the if the board agrees to what we just presented, yeah, it could be next meeting. But I have to present it to our our attorney, and then he's got to write it up. I mean, but it's uh, it's all there. I mean, you got to go through the secret processes. A uh, 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 was it Act Stage One or something like that? Um, uh, it, it's a process. Process. So you have to do uh, your due diligence in the secret process. So it's not just as simple as just saying pass it, right? So. Um, if the board's okay with the, the wording, I'll get some more uh, feedback through emails, possibly, and then I'll send it to our attorney, and then he will dictate when it goes on, you know. Okay, so there's the town code, and then there's the town master plan, and then there's the county master plan. 
Yeah, but this has nothing to do with the master plan. This, this, what we're changing, our engineer says, coincides with our master plan. So it doesn't, it's not going to affect anything with that. Okay, so the new town code coincides. This is just an update to the town code. That's it. Just an update to the town code. Yeah, I mean, every code that we do, if we do an update to it, should coincide with our master plan, right? And that's if, you, if it doesn't coincide with your master plan, that's when you have cause for like Article 78, some people to, to say that it's not abiding by what was passed in your master plan. This is not deviating from our master plan because we're still protecting the ridge line as you still see it from the east. There's a roof line that's not going to be above the tree lines, right? So you're not going to see that house sitting on top of the roof. Uh, and it has nothing to do with erosion and water problems because all that part, all that is still in the code and not being changed. So, you know, so it has, you know, it's, it's in line with our master plan. Has anybody gone to a higher elevation to see the actual clearing that's up there? Have I been up there? Oh, we know, we, know, we know what happened up there. Our attorneys are involved. I mean, what you guys don't know is we have attorneys involved. We have stop work order plans. We have our attorney on this. It's not like we're not doing anything in, in the background. There's a lot of things going on in the background. I can't forcibly go up there and arrest the gentleman. It's not the way it works. Only the Supreme Court of the state of New York can stop him. That's how it works in the New York state. We, we do our due diligence as far as going to our, the code enforcement officer writes up a violation. If the violation is ignored, we go to our attorney. They put in a stop work order, cease and desist. He doesn't do that. We go to the next step. We go to the Supreme Court to get an order. And that's the step we're at. So just so you know, this costs the taxpayers lots of money, but we do it because we want people to abide by our codes. So just so you know, when Dave says that people are saying we're doing something for one individual, no, we're not. We are actually suing that individual. You are. Okay? Just so you know that. We are taking this seriously. You, you, you're, you're and we saying. have from day one. We know what he did up there. I have aerial views. I have drone pictures. I got everything. I get them all. Trust me. I get emails. <laughs> I know what's going on. Yes? So that also have to go to the county planning board and say... Probably. It doesn't necessarily have to, but we are going to. Oh, so it might not be by the next meeting that you... Well, we could pass it, but it has to... We, we could pass what we're going to do. But we don't, it's still, we're going to probably send it to the county for review and we're probably going to send it to the planning board for review just to make sure we uh, dot our uh, I's and cross our T's to make sure it's all, all good. But just keep in mind, when it goes to county planning, basically they're just going to give recommendations. Recommendation is a recommendation. You don't have to do it. Everybody gives a recommendation. You know. But that's fine. We're going to do, we're going to do the 30 day wait after that. So, but we got to introduce it back, right? We got to introduce the change. So. Can I just make one other comment? I know that everything is in the context of this one application, but the master plan also is very intent on protecting the farmland with drainage and the microclimate. So we're all thinking that it's only aesthetics, but it's not only aesthetics. And if well, according to the engineer, it is. He wrote it. Well, all the rest of the codes, all the rest of the codes pertain to drainage. This is 100% visual. That's why it says looking from the east to our ridge, because that's what it's talking about, the visual of the east, visual of our ridge. No, the master plan is a lot more than that, but I'm saying specifically to this code, 
this section that we're looking at amending is more or less, it's basically for visual aspect. Again, all the hard line stuff for drainage and roads and engineer checkoffs was never even looked at being changed. That was always in there. I don't understand what you're saying. The people on Crenshaw can build exactly where they're at. They're all subdivided already. If that's done, I understand that. So what? What? What else? I, I don't know what you I don't know why you're bringing up that subdivision. It's already subdivided. Well, because if they, they could already build exactly where they're at. Yeah. Again, what I just said about 300 times throughout this process. Everybody's not going to be happy, right? I told you in the beginning, we believe in personal property rights, but we also believe in codes and laws that protect other people's property rights, right? So having said that, we're giving people the option to go up 15 more feet, basically, on a two-story house than they currently can, basically what it comes down to. That is not a significant change to the code that causes any significant adverse effects to the master plan at all. None. Okay? Of course they can. Of course. And we're and that's and that's what we're that's what we're telling you is that everybody's not gonna be happy. We're not changing this for one person. And we're not changing it for another one person. We're changing it for the whole town. And this is in the middle. We're giving flexibility, but we're not saying you could build right on top of the ridge. That's what we're doing. It's not an adverse major effect to the master plan. That's what we're telling you. Unless we can find Unless it, you're, you're basically, you're, you're arguing the fact that you want me to leave the code exactly the way it is and do nothing. That's not gonna happen, okay? We went through this process. We are making a change. We are giving flexibility to property owners. The people in Trincali Lane can build right now. It's been approved. There's no, nothing we can do about that. That's been approved. So they're going to have to build, also, with, they have to build within the guidelines of the Ridge Code. But also, let's take, take a look at this. How long, is that, how long has that subdivision been approved? 15 years. 19, right? 19 years. Who's built up there yet? Nobody. Nobody. I love the mountains, but I got to tell you, I went up to Santini's property. I had to put my truck in four-wheel drive to get up there. I can't see. Exactly. I mean, I understand we just don't want to go off of, well, who the hell is going to build up there? But, but basically, who the hell is going to build up there? I mean, you got one guy right now, and I don't see anybody else beating the door down to buy 20 acres of property to build on top of the ridge. I don't even know how you could own an acre on top of the ridge. You'd have to own more than that to get there, I would think. I, very, I don't know. There's very few lots, if you break it down, and how this code should have probably been done originally. Right. Each individual Correct. lot in that should have been specifically spelled out within the code. And that's what the engineer originally said they could have done, but they didn't do. They picked this 750-foot mark, and that's what they went off of, and anything above that is in the ridge line. That's how it was, was done. But having said that, we're not making a significant change to the code. We're actually improving it because we're giving some definitions to the code. We're giving some guidelines into the code as far as lighting and color and texture and structure. So it actually gives a little more um, uh, guidance to the applicants and to the planning board if they come in front of the planning board. We also fix in our, uh, our application for the building department. So again, I think what Dave said a lot of this got a little maybe too extreme for some people, and then on the other side, maybe not. But again, we're governing for the whole town, not just one side or the other. And we don't believe this is a significant change. I asked our engineer, Pat Hines, and he said, absolutely not. This is not a significant change to the code at all. So again, we'll figure the rest of it out, and then we'll present it, and then we'll go from there. So. Any other comments? I just feel blank. So I, 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 I wonder where the responsibility is. So if you get approved with the new code, and where does the trees and that goes, and then clear cutting, really scarring the land? 
There's a section of the code that deals with cutting the trees and coding. Yeah. But how, how, who, how, how does the, is the applicant made aware of that? Yeah. And who follows up the, to make sure that they're not doing that? Is it complaint driven? Complaints. Is it proactive or is it reactive? Mostly it's done by complaints. I, I, the code enforcement officer's office only goes to houses based on complaints. That's how it works. He don't drive around and just like look at everybody's house. I will just say that that, is, that sets up for a very contentious uh, community. If it's well, it's not just our community, it's every community. I'm, I'm just saying. But I mean, I mean you're, you're saying something uh, that every community deals with. Every community. That's the way it works. Correct. If you hire another part-time code enforcement officer, I would suggest that at some point when people are building a lot, that they look, if we're this concerned about the bridge and the drainage and the comprehensive plan, they need to look at what they're doing with that land, and it should not be complaint-driven. I think you have well, and, and otherwise, it's, it's, and, and then what is the complaint? I will and tell you this. We, I mean, it's very, it's very, you're, you're saying that doesn't, we get complaints all the time about a lot of things. And it, it, it finds a lot of things. And this was, this was complained about. And as I just explained 20 minutes ago, it was dealt with in the way that New York State allows us to deal with it. There is no cease and desist by the code enforcement officer. He cannot go up there and do anything but write a violation. That's the only thing that the New York State law allows a building inspector code enforcement officer to do in the New York State in a municipality. That's it. He's not an officer of the law. He's not a court officer. He could write a violation. He could end up writing 10 violations before it finally gets to a court. And in the meantime, the applicant, as has happened in many of, not just this applicant, in many other situations in our town, has pushed the limit and pushed the limit and pushed the limit until they got to the court and the court said stop. But by then, they already did 75% of what they wanted to do. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that's right at all. That's wrong, 100% wrong. But certain people know how to push the laws based on our laws of New York State. And that's just the way it is. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. But yes, mostly all these are code um, driven by a complaint. The code enforcement officer does not go out unless he gets a complaint. So if you see something, say something, as they always say, right? And then he is required to go out and follow up on that complaint, no matter who it is. So like when some people call me a lot of times to complain, I say, you have to put it in writing. Once it's in writing and it goes to the building department, and the code enforcement officer, he has, to, he has to go to the site and he's got to write the violation if it, if it is a violation. Sometimes people think something's a violation that really isn't a violation too. So um, just because you might not like something doesn't mean it's not legal. So that's what their job is, right? So I understand what you're saying. I Trust me, I get it. You know, when I first took, came into this position, I think most people that set up here probably didn't realize, and I know I didn't realize, uh, what the code enforcement officer can and couldn't do. I thought they could just go out there and tell them to stop doing what they're doing or you're going to jail, right? I mean, it would make sense, right? You know your town, you know what you, you, know what, what you can and can't do, but that's not the law. So there's a procedure and we're following that procedure to the letter. Um, and uh, you know, the next step, like I said, is the Supreme Court again. This is not the first time that we've done this. This will be the second time, so. We just follow the law. Any other public comments? Just one up, sorry, just one up, not to the labor. And this is probably better for the planning board, but at some level, emergency services like fire and ambulance, are they, is that going to be consideration for these? Yeah, yeah that, that'd have to be, we, they would have to board. sign a waiver. They would have to sign some type of waiver. The town is not going to be responsible if there's a, 
if, if there's a fire and a fire truck can't get up there, and, and other communities such as Gardner, when they when they build on on uh, elevations that emergency vehicles can't get up, such as the fire department, they will make them put a 30,000 gallon tank in the ground with the with the way to get the fire hose in there and suck out of it. And if they don't uh, and if they don't agree to that, then they don't allow them to build. So they'll be they'll be if for emergency services. They're going to make them do certain things. You know, if there's a heavy snowstorm and ambulance can't get up there, and God forbid somebody dies, the town's That's, not going to be the town can't be held liable. That would be done through the planning process, yeah. or if, if they have yeah, a that all be addressed. If they actually have a lot, like I said, there's two different scenarios, right? If they have a lot that's already there, pre-existing, and they just get a co go to the building department, it would be the same thing, right? Because this is also why we have grade these, restrictions on a town road. Well, it's you not know. just town road, but I mean, especially in the ridge, if we're talking specifically ridge, right. I mean, the engineer, as you see through the code, has to approve like multiple things. One of them is the road, right? So when it comes to the road, and trust me, our engineer is a fire chief. So <laughs> he's really on top of, of emergency type things like that. So I lost it again. But yeah, there's, there's definitely um, uh, uh, restrictions for for that and like Dave said you would have to get a waiver because I could tell you right now uh, I wouldn't want to drive up there I don't know how any other ones before I get to resolutions all right I'm gonna get to resolutions once I connect Resolution 38 to hold a public hearing on the establishment of the Vineyard Hills Subdivision Drainage District. Supervisor Corker imposes the following order by the Town Board for a hearing on the establishment of the Vineyard Hills Subdivision Drainage District, where is a petition for the establishment of the Vineyard Hills Subdivision Drainage District was filed with the Town Board of the Town of Marble, Ulster County, New York. Whereas the proposed extension area is identified as tax parcel number 108.03-3-4.66, 108.003-3-4.13 and 14 on the tax map of the town of Marble as shown on boundaries and included in the real property identification of Schedule A annexed here to and made uh, part hereof. And whereas the proposed drainage improvement consistent of items specified in the map plan and report prepared by Miracle Northern Travel, Marshall Engineering and Land Surveying PC on January 30th, 2024 on a file with the town clerk, the map plan and report. And whereas the drainage improvement shall be made by the owner as developed of the project and whereas the maximum capital amount proposed to be extended for the drainage improvement is $0.00, .00 since the cost of the improvement shall be borne by the developer. And said capital improvements are proposed to be dedicated to the proposed drainage district. And where's a set forth within the map plan and report this estimated amount anticipated to be expended annually by the proposed drainage district for the operation and maintenance of the facility is $1,750 per year. And the annual benefit assessment cost of the typical property, which will be a one family home, shall initially approximately be $250 per year based on the annual budget spread over seven uh, benefit units. And ordered. This board will hold a public hearing to consider the adoption of the petition and relevant matters on April 8th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall facility at 21 Milton Turnpike, Milton, New York, in the town of Marlboro, County, Ulster, New York. All persons interested in this matter shall be heard in this matter. Ordered that the town clerk of the town of Marlboro is hereby authorized and directed to publish a certified copy of this order in the official paper. The first publication thereof to be not less than 10 nor more than 20 days before the day set for the hearing and to post a copy of the same on the sign board of the town of Marlboro in the same time and manner and required by town code section 193. The foregone resolution was voted upon with 
all council members voting as followed. Yes. 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 Thank you. And this was the Schedule A, which is attached, and it will be posted. It's just all the different mm -hmm. distances from the road, the lengths. And resolution 39 to transfer funds. Supervisor Cork proposes the following, whereas the town board needs to improve the transfer of funds. Be it resolved that the following be transferred. Transferred $67,957.50 from the Water Department cash account SW0200.000 to the Water Department's Capital Improvement Reserve Fund SW.0230.006 for water rents collected in 2023 and moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 Thank you. Eddie, it's all you. First of all, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Easter. Yes, and yes, thank uh, you. let's adjourn the meeting so we can get on to chasing Easter eggs. <laughs> 906. I need I a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you, everybody.